Hello, last Friday the new uh, Pet Shop Boys album Nonetheless was released, the first album since 2020's Hotspot and I didn't waste much time, I already made my every Pet Shop Boys album ranked ranking video on Friday, you know, I prepared for that video um, the week before, you know, re-listening to the other albums and putting them in, into the right position. Um, and then I listened to nonetheless two or three times uh, for Spotify on, on Friday and then I had to rank it into, put it into my ranking and it came out number 10th but I've already told you on Friday that I can see that this album could be a grower and, and could get higher in, in the future and you know now three days later I'm already, I'm already um, convinced that this is better than my 10th favorite Pet Shop Boys album, I would say it's better than my number 9, uh, Super, and it's probably now my number 8, uh, so it also overtook um, Fundamental, which is kind of controversial because Fundamental um, is already a classic, you know, my, uh, but this is an album that really profits from being listened to on a, on a, on a great sound system, uh, great production by James Ford. Um, you know, I think he's one of the best producers uh, working right now. Um, I I kind of liked his, his indie groups he had uh, 20 years ago. He was part of Simeon and Simeon Mobile Disco. wasn't really a fan of them, but they were alright. But then he went on to become a producer and produced really great albums that I really like, mostly by indie bands like the Mystery Chats or Klaxons. I can see um, Pet Shop Boys picking him also because of his work for the Klaxons, which was this neo-rave group, um, which really uh, probably was very influenced by, by some Pet Shop Boys. Um, and you know, the Last Shadow Puppets, for example, was, you know, what I liked about his Last Shadow Puppets productions that, that also applies for nonetheless, you know, um, the, 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 the very the, the details he puts into it, but also the big, the, the, the big scale, um, the, lots of strings, lo lots of orchestration, uh, and it really sounds uh, like a timeless record, um, a record that will also sound good in, in 10 years. And in my opinion, it's, yeah, this, is, this could be a, a classic, a Pet Shop Boys classic, and um, you know, I don't really want it to be the last album, but this would be a perfect last album. This is really a full circle album, and in a way it's a sequel to Behavior, I would say, an unofficial sequel. Um, Behavior, in my opinion, was about growing up and being finally an adult, or adults. Um, they were around 40, they were approaching 40 when that uh, album came out, and uh, now they are approaching 70 and so now one could say this album is now about getting old, you know, behavior about growing up, this is about growing old and I don't really want them to retire but if they would retire with this album they would really retire on a, on a high on a high note and this album has, you know, the, the feel, the vibe of a, of a great last album um, with, uh, you know, that the lyrics are very inward looking, introspective, no pun intended lyrics, um, it has some melancholy, you know, great Pet Shop Boys songs and albums always have not just party and fun, they also have melancholy. This album has also party and fun, you know, a song like Why Am I Dancing could be from, would be a brilliant track on Very, you know, it's a really a uh, dance anthem, but mostly the vibe of the album is, which is great for them at this this time in their career is really a reflective, inward looking album. Um, and yeah, the artwork is also nice. I have this edition with, uh, with the 4 track EP. Um, furthermore, um, where they re recorded four of the classic songs, you know, do, is it really something I, I would need? They re recorded Heart Being Boring, Over Summer Mind and It's a Sin. I think the re recording of Being Boring is. It's great and also touching, you know, this is a song that really fits with the mood of the rest of the of this production and this time what's different to the original version is the, there's a spoken word passage by Neil in, in this song um, and if you know the video, the original video to Being Boring, 
Um, there's a written note by Neil where he explains what the song is about and now he spoke that written note um, that this song is about a friend who had parties when he grew up and all that stuff. So it's really a great song. Um, also like for this full circle uh, theme, I would say, of, of this project. The other three, you know, Heart, Always On My Mind, it's a scene, I wouldn't have needed them, but you know, it's okay, it's a bonus. Um, but the core album, the real album, uh, nonetheless, you know, on my video, in my video uh, on Friday, I often refer to the title track of, I said some, some things like the title track, the track nonetheless, that's a great track. Uh, of course, there is no title track, there is no track nonetheless. It's, you know, that's one of the things that happened when you had just listened three times to an album. Um, I was referring to the to the song that was the single that was released before the album, I was of course referring to Loneliness, which is a great, epic, symphonic song. Um, you know, when it got released in, I think, January or February, I, I was a bit afraid that um, this could be the best song of the album. You know, often the single in advance this is like the big bang of the album. And I thought, mm, it's a great song, but if this is the best song of the album, maybe I won't like the album that much. Um, but it's not the best song on the album. It's a great song and a great opener. Not the title track, but the opener. That's what I meant on Friday, the, the opener. Um, it's not the best track. You know, I prefer, I've already mentioned Why Am I Dancing, which is one up-tempo song. New London Boy, which is a sort of a sequel to West End Girls. Uh, great song. Then A New Bohemia talked about it on Friday. It's a very beatly sounding song. Even the drums sound very Ringo-esque, but the strings especially very George Martin-esque. Uh, it's like it's a bit like now and then the new Beatles single, but better. You know, it's a better written song. You know, better than the Beatles. What more do you want? Bullet for Narcissus is also a great song. Great guitar motif in that song that reminds me a bit of some of the songs on Bilingual, like for example. Um, before, the great single before. Um, but what all these songs have in common, and this is what makes this album, in my opinion, better than Super or all those other recent albums, Hotspot, um, Electric, all, all those 21st century albums, um, is that the lyrics really have something to say. It's not just like Pet Shop Boys pastiches where they try to recreate the magic from the 80s or, or 90s. It's you know it has elements of songs from the past, great great memories uh, that they weave into the songs. But the lyrics are really about them now, about what what is going on in in Neil's mind, in Neil's world now. And that's really something that I really really like about this album. And this is one of the reasons why it has to be in my ranking, the best 21st century album of the Pet Shop Boys, next to fundamental and I, I like release, you know, I'm, I'm in the minority who, who really likes the release album. But I think those are my three favorites now of the 21st century um, by far. And what else can I tell you? You know, if there's one filler on that album, you know, from the 10 tracks, I really love nine tracks. One song that doesn't really quite fit on the album to me is the Schlager hit parade. You know, Schlager, that's in my country, in Germany, Austria, in those countries, that's like music, that's music, music, you know, really, really cheap sounding, very mainstream, in middle of the road music. Um, and, you know, I, I can understand, you know, I, I know what he wants to do with that song because Pet Shop Boys um, could be accused of sounding Schlager like in some of the, um, some of the songs um, have a sound aesthetic like that and he's playing with that but you know it's 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 a it's a it's a silly funny song but it doesn't really fit with the tone of the rest of the album i think you know in in times when there were such things as b-sides this would have been a b-side and, and it would be a great funny little B Pet Shop boys b-side um you know uh, if they, they could have released this album as a nine track album without that song and then then definitely this would be like my seventh or eighth favorite Pet Shop Boys album, you know, even better than Fundamental and, and Release. And only the classic, you know, the first six albums are my top six and it's, you know, it's virtually impossible for them to make a, a better album than their first six albums um, these days. But it's, you know, it's the best album they could make, they could have made um, this time. I don't hope it's the last album, but it's 
it it sounds like a great last album and if they would end on this note they would really end on a high note um so nonetheless great album and possibly yeah my favorite album up until now this year you know it hasn't been a, for me not really a great year in pop music so far um but still you know great achievement for them to to have my favorite album of the year so far uh, Petra Boys nonetheless thank you very much for watching until next time